Hello, D-Class. Did you know the U.S. Postal Service tells you not to use the blue, uh, mailboxes anymore? Really? Yeah, you no, know, they, they made an announcement, announcement because, uh, criminals are uh, using them to steal stuff. Criminals. Shut up. I can't, you know I can't say certain words. I know, it's, it's, I, you, you know me, I, I'm never meaning any disrespect, but it's just, the way you end up saying things, it's always really funny to me. Yeah, anyway, yeah, uh, bad people keep, uh, stealing shit, so, you're, they tell you not to use it anymore. Criminals. So now, Hatchet, you got to learn something new. Wait a minute. Bright? Yeah? Bernie Sanders has 43 viewers and you only have one. I don't give a fuck. Get your game face on. Fuck you're you. never gonna reach your. You're never gonna reach your follower goal at this rate. Bernie Sanders taking all your. <laughs> oh God! Shut up. <laughs> Bernie Sanders is is siphoning away all the SCP enjoyers. He is the new uh, one of the new uh, seven thousand SCP. That just steals viewers from other Twitch channels. We're not sure nah, why the... he's to ask why he's not <laughs> Nah, the new, nah, the new, the new, seven thousand SCP that is Bernie Sanders is literally just a uh, a really progressive old man who is immortal and can never be gotten rid of from the Congress because he's good. I was tempted to find a picture of Bernie Sanders and put it on this tier list. Oh dear God! <laughs> what? <laughs> well, I mean, if if we did, I forget all the. Wait, can you uh Discord stream? Uh yeah, I've forgotten all of the tears. I guess let's just speculate. Can... Where would you put it's Bernie's reassign? Tears? What the fuck? A spood tier, only one, certain group, city, country, continent, world changing, XK, and ZK. Mm. Well, then, uh, Bernie Sanders would obviously be in spood tier. <laughs> What's actually fucked up if we did put a picture of Bernie Sanders, they would be right next to the wheelchair. <laughs> Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! That is so fucked. I didn't realize that till now. That is, We're not doing so this. Fun. We're we're uh, cut cut the cut cut the video. We're out of here. <laughs> anyway, are we ready for the first SCP? I'm never ready. All right. This is. SCP-1574. Didn't you hear me? I said I'm never ready. Fuck it. Fuck you. I don't give a fuck. Alright. <laughs> SCP-1574 right. is a roughly spherical object of extraterrestrial origin, 1.63 meters in diameter, and capable of moving in any motion. SCP-1574 has never been directly observed due to, due to a Perceptive altering effect it emits on any living subject capable of observing it. This causes a subject to believe that they are perceiving a variety of other objects partially logged in this document. This is believed to be a cloaking effect to allow SCP-1574 easy access to surveillance locations without being seen. Announced by other means has shown SCP-1574's actual shape, but testing to observe it further is ongoing. December 15th, 1927. Appearance. Meteorite. Notes. First sighting of SCP-1574. September 2nd, 
1935. Miniature storm cloud in, in the Florida Keys. Notes. Wandered into a, the path of a hurricane believed to have da damaged SCP-1574 to an unknown degree. May 28, 1940. Appearance. A small explosion, constantly changing its shape, although the general size was equivalent to SCP-1574. Notes. Generated heat and force equivalent to an actual explosion of the size. June 17, 1956. White picket fence located in... Oh wait, sorry. Appearance. White picket fence located in suburban residential area within Miami, Florida. Notes. Would replace portions of other fences in order to blend in. Cause no si significant alarm to civilian population due to lack of movement. October 14th, 1974. Uh, 1964. Appearance. A Volkswagen Type 2 automobile painted with hippie colors. Notes. Suspended itself underwater in a lake within redacted Florida, USA. March 16th, 1976. Disco ball with size comparable to SCP-1574. Suspended itself above a pine forest in redacted Cuba. Redacted. Data expunged. Data expunged. December 26, 2004. Parents. A violently throbbing body of water, approximately twice SCP-1574 size. Notes. Occasional wildlife such as fish or vegetation could be seen within the water. August 27th, 2005. Appearance. A miniature storm cloud similar to how it appeared on se September 2nd, 1935. Notes. Nothing. January 20th, 2009. Appearance. Manifested as the disembodied head of American President Barack Hussein Obama. Notes manifested underground within a mine in redacted Mexico. September 18th, 2000, 2012. Appearance appeared as a miniature version of the star 3214 Hybris, which had been studied in the same area SV1574 had manifested in. Notes displayed anomalous properties. Identical to S SCP-255, resulting in redacted casualties to observation team. The movement pattern displayed by SCP-1574 is erratic and apparently random, usually taking it through rural areas of Mexico and Cuba and waters bordering, bordering those states. It has been known to make brief excursions to other states bordering the Gulf of Mexico, but those occur more rarely. It moves at a constant speed of 20 kilometers per hour, with altitude varying between 1 and 16 meters off the ground. As of redacted, no major population centers have been targeted by SCP-1574, but this has not been eliminated as a possibility. Various radio broadcasts have been recorded to emit from SCP-1574, usually directly following an alteration in its appearance. Prior to 1935, these broadcasts were incomprehensible to Foundation Xenocryptographers. However, since September 3rd, 1935, all transmissions made by SCP-1574 have used terrestrial languages spliced together from various media programs. SCP-1574 was first observed on 
December 15, 1927, as a meteorite headed towards Earth. Following impact, SCP-1574 anomalous properties were observed by the Foundation personnel, leading to its classification as an anomalous object. SCP-1574 was documented as an SCP on November 23, 1941, and classified as Euclid. Following SCP-1574's manifestation on September 18, 2012, it has been reclassified as Keter. Alright, there you go. That. Well, there isn't an addendum, but I wasn't sure if you wanted me to read it for more information if you need it. Yeah, it's like, as of right now, like, I, I don't see how this thing's dangerous in the slightest. Alright. Addendum 1574-A. S. Alright. Date. December 15th, 1927. Message incomprehensible. Notes nothing. September second, nineteen thirty-five. We are fear. Cannot continue. Upwards can. Velocity stop. Do not panic. Report to the people can hear us. Advise assistant to all. Notes spliced together from Franklin Delano. Roosevelt's Fireside Chats. May 28th, 1940. Message. Violence has erupted. Not result of mind searcher, but of normal conventions to world. Search continues for savior. Notes. Broadcasts in German, taken from various propaganda broadcasts. June 17th, 1956. Message. Well, we sure are still here. Send aid soon. Wow. The colors are big. The biggest is out there. Notes. Taken from various children cartoon programs. October 14th, 1964. Message. Attempts to groove and... Have flunked. War is on still. Present not detected. Notes. Taken from redacted. March 16th, 1976. Message. Decay from planet. Unsure if it is from prep. Pep. But continue. One day you may find us again. Note. Taken from various daily news programs. Redacted. Message. Data expunged. Notes. Data expunged. December 26, 2004. Message. It's causing disaster. Everywhere. People are being crushed riding on wave. It was caused by the search party. Data will be seen at 5. Notes, taken from various disaster relief organizations. September 18th, 2012. We have found it. Personnel are advised to reach evacuation location. Please help us. It's going to kill us. Please send help before it comes to you. Notes. <laughs> Voice and broadcast found to be identical to Agent Redacted who had been killed by SCP-1574. Note that no evidence exists that Agent Redacted broadcasts these words. And that's it. When 1874, is that the number of this current SCP? Yes. Okay, so it can kill people. Yeah. I have absolutely no idea what to do with this thing. <laughs> yeah. One of the funny things I find funny about it is that it 
at one point manifested as the disembodied head of American B President Barack yeah. Hussein Obama. <laughs> For no reason. <laughs> like, it's normally trying to... Wait, was that the same time when we had redacted info? No. Okay. Yeah, it's like... Normally, it's trying to blend in with surroundings, but no, you know what? Today, I'm feeling like being a disembodied head of a former U.S. president. Hell yeah, brother. <laughs> the fuck? Uh, I, I just don't know what to do with this thing. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt people much. It just floats around and does weird shit and makes broadcasts. Like, oh, it's it's you... just a podcast creator. <sighs> sure. It's like, like, even if, like, everything that it's saying is, like, correlated to something bad happening, I don't even think that it's this SCP causing those bad things. Based upon what we have, this thing literally seems to just be a drone. Yeah. So, like, where where do we put the occasionally kills people drone? Probably, on, uh, probably only one. For Chus, certain groups. Chu says SCP Joe Rogan. Oh, gross. I just, I just like before this, I was watching. Some of Cyrus's videos about the Alex Jones trial. I don't yeah. need to remember people like that. Yeah. So you think only one or a certain group? We have a lot in certain group. Put it in only one. Alright. Oops, not put that there. There we go. Also, did you come in and immediately start playing shrimp? Apparently. Cool. There we go. Alright. Playing shrimp. Ready like for the next cards. SCP? I, I mean, yeah. Alright. I'm not going anywhere. Uh. Good, we're... Uh, next SCP is the military can. The what? Yeah, y'all understand. The mil? No, no, I'm, I'm. Yeah, the military can. Uh, okay. You don't, you don't understand. All right. Oh wait, no, not military can. Military barrel. I'm sorry. That's my bad. <laughs> <laughs> I Those just called a barrel a can. <laughs> Those are, it's just you shrunk down the barrel. Yeah. <laughs> what is a barrel but a very large can? <laughs> uh, yeah. Anyway, on to the SCP. SCP fifteen eighty three designates a collect designates as a collection of metallic barrels. Designed for use in supplying fallout shelters. It re reproduced images and re oh, in reproduced images, they serious feature the informational text originally printed on them when viewed directly. The labels read Note from the Department Note from Department of Defense. Why did I have so much trouble saying department? This device can be used in your shelter or other places of refuge to perfect, to perfect, protect. My fucking tongue is fucking up. God damn it. <laughs> to protect yourselves and your families from the horror of nuclear warfare, simply enter your family into the shelter of choice and open your container. Safety will follow. You will be protected and comforted with your family bit by bit, held safely until ev every other seeker of comfort is too. Then we come out, rebuilding a burned world together. 
blood and stone, flesh to wood, sweat and concrete. Build in your image. When opened, instances of SCP-1583 will re release thin, white thread-like organisms, which will bind together in order to form a large appendage. SCP-1583 will attempt to seize living subjects and bring them within its mass. Following this, the thread-like portions of, of its mass will disassemble the subject's body. Outer epidermis will be destroyed within 14 seconds of contact followed by muscles and other tissue. The subject's schedule structure will slowly dissolve over a period of up to three hours. There is no observed limit to the quantity of this mass. SV-1583 is capable of releasing with containment breaches and redacted reaching almost 600 meters up above the, the instance. This organism is capable of opening SV-1583 on its own if there is nothing preventing it from exiting on the other side. These entities are, poss are possible to be destroyed through application of extreme heat, but if additional instances of SCP-1583 breach containment or the containment by other organizations fa fails, the energy required to neutralize SCP-1583 entities increases. In addition, the mass and speed of the of emergence has increased over time, currently being at 200 kilograms of matter every 15 seconds. Four instances of SCP-1583 have been destroyed by by the Foundation since initial containment. If an instance of SCP-1583 is opened, the pressure exerted by the organisms within all other SCP-1583 instances will increase. Proportionally requiring additional pressure to prevent containment breaches. This new increase in force will be permanent in no way of reducing or relieving it has been found. The destruction of emergent SB-1583 entities have been found to have no effect on the new forces produced by other instances of SB-1583. SB-1583 was recovered on September 19th, 1989, after an entity breached within the redacted group campus. Foundation agents were able to destroy the emergent entities and contain 20 instances of SB-1583. During this time, stored instances of SB-1583 suddenly increased its in pressure and breach, causing the destruction of Site-57. SCP-1583 is was reclassified as Keter. On November 15, 1999, Foundation assets were able to confirm that the GOC possessed instances of SCP-1583. The GOC is believed to have breached one instance of in a 1990 destruction attempt, which caused the initial Foundation reclassification. GOC personnel were contacted and the current joint containment procedures were negotiated. With the Palm Agreement established precedent for joint containment of anomalies. There you go. So they're just big, big barrels that when opened. Try to vor everything. Hey, Chew! <laughs> well, Chew's not into digestion. These things digest you really quick. Yeah, also, Chew. Oh, <laughs> Fuck you. <y 'all. laughs> <laughs> anyway, I, I, I love how Chew's message is is that where the, <laughs> where the military shits out its unnecessarily high budget? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, that's that's where that's where the U.S. military budget goes into uh, making four cans. <laughs> Shoot, redeem, fuck you, Hatchet. Very good. So, what do you think, Hatchet? Also, hey, Aderna. Oh, hi, Aderna. We're talking about four cans. <laughs> they were here. 
Ähm, Oh, is it Jerry? No, that's a Chew. Hello, Chew. I will not allow the slander. What slander? Um, the the lies. You're always eating your your audience. <laughs> you know, you could just take it to court. You're into you're into war. Mm, don't know what you're talking about. I don't need if to you... know what that is. Listen, listen, Chu. I, I, I have evidence. I have tons of evidence. No, no, no. Listen, listen, Chu. If you have an issue with us saying us and saying this, then go ahead and bring us up on charges of defamation. See how see how that uh see how that court court case works out for you. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, Especially when he, you know, such such yeah. such like. Especially when we have so much evidence at our fingertips. Yeah. Anyway, on with the SCP. Uh, I do have a bit more information. Uh, I forgot to say its nickname. It it only makes us stronger. That's its nickname. Okay. Not quite sure what that means, but okay. Yeah. Um, so based upon everything we've talked about, um, these things seem pretty damn dangerous because if they just keep like having increasingly more powerful uh vor arms come out, uh that could easily we get out of hand very quickly. Yeah, and it also said in your article that it can open its lid by itself. So there's no living things around it for a while, or there's no way of keeping it down. Yeah, like... Um... I guess the question is, do we have, like... Did, did they mention whether there was a theo theoretical cap to how big they can get? Uh, let me look at it again. I think it sounded like it got really big at one time. Let me see. Yeah, there was one time where its limb reached 600 meters above it. Jesus. So, I, I don't know if it has a limit. That's just the highest has been reported. Uh... I, I'd probably put it around continent. Yeah. Seeing how they had to ally with an enemy to <laughs> deal with it. It's less that they had to ally with them and more that the GOC fucked up, realized they fucked up, and are like, okay, yeah, maybe we should just kind of, like, not mess with these fucking barrels of vor doom again. <laughs> you think they would learn a lesson from the chair? <laughs> eh, well, you know what I mean by the chair, that. right? Yes, I know. Yeah, okay. I remember the chair. Yeah. All right. Everyone ready for the next one? Does this one also have to do with Vor? Uh, no. But it... Hush. Yeah, but it is actually one of my favorite SCPs. This is SCP-1591, The Fallen Star. Mm. SCP-1591 is a glass sculpture in the shape of a star, surrounded by 14 sheets of stained glass. The central... Sculpture weighs 1.2 kilograms, 
with the indiv individual panels weighing 12 kilograms each. All components of SCP-1591 are suspended approximately 6 meters above the ground through as as yet unknown mechanism. To date, efforts to activate the levitation of either the sculpture or the panels has been unsuccessful. SCP-1591 constantly produces light with gradually increasing brightness and intensity. Any surface illuminated by SCP-1591 will appear to become inconsistently transparent and if not removed, any affected matter will disappear from the observable space. Non-solid matter that makes contact with light produced by SCP-1591 will begin to rapidly decrease in temperature until it takes on a solid form. SCP-1591 is immune to its own effect. Organisms will retain consciousness and mobility while being affected by SCP-1591 although the ability to create speech will be lost. Affected organisms will usually react in a panicked manner, attempting to flee from SCP-1591's light as quickly as possible. If an affected organism ceases being exposed to SCP-1591's light, it will quickly fade and vanish. Further research of this effect has been inhibited by the continued destruction of observational equipment, SCP-1591 has been exposed to lights of greater intensity than its own will cause the rate at which its brightness increases to be produced by 10,000 LX to 50,000 LX every 24 hours. The intensity of the light produced by SCP-1591 does not decrease over distance. SCP-1591 was recovered in 1940 from Redacted Italy, where it, it was in the possession of known Serpent's Hand operatives. During initial containment, SCP-1591's effect was no, negligible, taking over 82 hours to completely destroy a 3x4x3-meter wooden block. It was contained within Site 77's safe containment wing, focusing light on SCP-1591 was discovered to prevent its effect from spreading. Initially, the light required for containment of SCP-1591 was relatively low. In February of 1941, Site 77 was partially damaged by Allied bombing raids. These bombs caused by SCP-1591 was containment to be breached, resulting in most of the remaining portions of Site-77 being destroyed. After control of the facility was re-established, SCP-1591 was discovered to be significantly more hazardous and reclassified as Euclid. The second containment breach resulted in Site-77 being severely damaged and the loss of redacted personnel. It has then been changed to Keto class. There you go. So it's 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 a it's a levitating ball that disintegrates matter. Yep. Mm. I I may have missed it. Did did they say that there was like a a limit to? How much it affects now and is if it was if it was growing uh no it's it, it only said it, it it's light the light it produces if you if it touches anything living it will be disintegrated was it living or just anything in general uh it said organisms and let's see i said the food I mean, the only time it doesn't talk about disintegration is from non solid matter when it makes contact with light will rapidly decrease in temperature until it takes on a solid form. 
No, I mean, uh, like, does it... You said organisms, which means living things. It, does it disintegrate things that aren't living? Uh... Oh, uh, wait, uh... During... During initial containment, SCP-1590 was affected with negligible, taking over 82 hours to completely destroy a 3x4x3-meter wooden block. Okay, so... It can... disintegrate basically anything. Yeah. The light's getting more intense every time we slip up. Yeah. What the hell is LX, though? LX? Yeah, it said 10,000 LX to 50,000 LX every 24 hours. Is that, like, a form of light measurement? I'm guessing. Let me just go look. Uh, LX. Like. Yeah, you can kind of see why this is one of my favorites, because it's so interesting. Oh, god damn it. What? I, I typed in LX light, and it took that to mean L and light. Yakami from Death Note. So, <laughs> when I put in LX light, the first thing that shows up is a bunch of fan fiction. <laughs> nice. Measurement. Oh, <laughs> LX light measurement. Uh, okay, yeah. So it's ba it's lux. Ah, uh, okay. U human unit of illuminance. Okay, so it is light measurement. Yeah, per unit area is the international system of units SI. It is equal to one lumen per square meter. In photo in photometry. This is used as a measure of the intensity as perceived by the human eye of light that hits or passes through a surface. So, honestly, I dare say this thing uh, could easily end the world if left unchecked. Yeah. So, I, mean, I the would. Foundation has fucked up twice. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, well, I mean, at least one of those we know for a fact can't be their fault because right. it was allied bombing raids. Yeah. But that's that's just that's just the Goberman's fault. But Wait, where, where was Site Forty Seven? Oh, Site Forty Seven is in Italy. Yeah, that's that makes sense. But yeah, I put that in XK. Also, you... I will simply uh oh, go ahead, Brian. I was gonna say, what do you think, Adorno? I we should probably hear everyone's opinions. True, true. Yeah. <laughs> and other stuff. Yeah. You you go to Derna? Yeah. Can I get like a short like explanation of what it is before I well it's like a, recap. It's a glass sculpture that disintegrates anything it it's like touches if left unchecked. Actually it's not even disintegrates. It just alt F fours matter. Yeah it just alt F fours. So it just deletes basically yeah it just yeah. Like when the when its light hits things, uh, after a certain period of time of that thing not moving, it will gradually become more transparent until the thing is just gone. I wait, would that uh, okay. actually be painful? Because it, it said it like organisms have been going through it. Does that mean they use D class? I don't oh. know. I probably don't use D class. I probably try. Okay, so the first the first thing is they probably tried like with with animals first. They probably tried to make sure they don't they use D class as little as necessary. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's why I said. 
And uh, the thing that I was saying is that uh, they can stop it from eliminating things by uh, consistently keeping it showered in outside light. Yeah. But every time it's like every time that containment procedure has lapsed, uh, it's gotten significantly stronger. So I was thinking it's probably an XK. So why don't they like? So they like keep it. Do they like keep it outside or something? I'm guessing that's not enough light, and plus that would be too inconsistent with nighttime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I could shoot into the sun. (laughs) I don't think they can get close to it to do that. Yeah, they, no, they can. They just have to like shoot it into the sun very quickly. <laughs> they they have to like. Uh... Well, the, well, there's an issue with that. There probably wouldn't oh, yeah, be yeah. enough lumens or lux on it at the at when it's out in the depths of space so there's but the there's the potential of it getting exponentially more powerful out there to the point where the sun isn't enough to stop it and then it just all tef force the sun <laughs> oh my god so we get rid of the sun okay yeah it's just like i mean it's better no than more sitting d class into it no you don't you don't need to do uh-huh. that right just Go to your room. No, I was saying it's better to, to shoot that towards the sun than shoot T class at the sun. <laughs> Wait, it's better to No, uh, it's it's not better to shoot that towards the sun. Are you kidding me? If there's a potential that it all have forced the sun, then that would kill all of humanity. Or would it uh-huh. or would it become the new sun? What? Right? If it be okay. If, if it, it became, became if it became the new sun, it would get rid it would get rid of all the entire solar system. Yeah, actually come to think of it, if this thing has no logical limits, it might actually be ZK. You mean yeah, yeah, ZK, yeah. Like reality or universe ending. I mean it didn't say it had a limit. Yeah, like, this thing could possibly be ZK. Okay, I guess I'll move it then. Yeah, I think I think ZK. But also, I will simply note, uh, oh, Chu will be back in a few minutes. Oh, it's, gonna, it's less fun to say this while Chu's away. But in, in chat, after we mocked Chu for Vor, uh... Uh, uh, Chu, Chu, Chu angrily goes, "Are you kidding me? Why universe? Why?" And then apparently, uh, Vor was trending on Twitter when Chu opened. <laughs> but you see, the the thing to take away from that is, uh, that almost certainly was specifically trending for Chu, which means that the algorithm of Twitter has noted that Chu would be interested. In the trend of four. Uh, yeah. You ready for the next SCP? That's super my, dangerous. My 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 Festus is here. Is Festus an SCP? Maybe. But anyway, this SCP is extremely dangerous and has the most terrifying name, Hatchet. You're gonna say some incredibly basal shit, just SCP-1616, also known as Nibbles. Nibbles? <laughs> Wait, back up. What did you say? Nibbles. N-I- Nibbles, okay. N-I-B-B-L-E-S. But for a second, Nibbles. I thought you said nipples. Nipples. <laughs> I was about to say, oh, great. We're all... Oh, fuck. There's two Keter classes stuck to me. Festus has eight Keter classes on him. What do we do? <laughs> ah, Festus! Ow. The uh, Keters, they're making Festus go loco. Uh, Not nipples. Anyway. Hey, Bookworm. Hey, Bookworm. <laughs> uh, 
All right. SCP-1616 is a common hamster with no genetic abnormalities. The subject behaves as a normal hamster would. Anomalous properties of SCP-1616 present themselves when SCP-1616 begins feeding. One or both of SCP-1616's cheeks will expand, containing an object previously seen by SCP-1616. If the object in question is inorganic, SCP-1616 will remove the object from its mouth and ignore it. Similar feeding has been observed for most organic materials, save for wood, which SCP-1616 will not completely consume, but return to and nibble like a common hamster would for dental upkeep. SCP-1616 typically consumes organic matter, which appears in its cheek over a course of time, if possible. SCP-1616 has been observed producing carrots, hamster feed, candy, and su substantial amounts of flesh from its cheeks. SCP-1616's cheeks will expand to accommodate any matter it produces, in one case expanding to accommodate for the size of one baby elephant weighing 105 kilograms. SCP-1616 does not suffer any trauma from the expansion as a tissue appears to maintain density and composition as it expands. SCP-1616's jaw will retract and expand to remove an object from its mouth. If the object in question is unable to be moved by SCP-1616's power alone, it will usually be emancipated by SCP-1616 moving back backwards away from the object. If SCP-1616 lacks the ability to move away from that subject due to lack of traction, it will simply retract its jaw and regurgitate it. Pushing itself away. It's assumed that SCP-1616 has difficulties consuming a still living object depending on its size. In the case of biological matter emancipated from organic subjects, nervous tissue seems to respond as if it were still in the host body. Subjects report feeling pain as if it were happening under normal circumstances, and nervous tissue is not disconnected at all. Suggesting as a sort of connection between the inside of SCP-1616's mouth and the host subject. Due to its nature, it is recommended SCP-1616 not be exposed to any photographs or illustrations, especially those considered dangerous. It is not confirmed whether or not SCP-1616's feeding process will be harmful or successful to SCP-1616 with hazardous objects. SCP-1616 will emancipate small portions of matter from cell wall or its entirely at any given time. This occurrence is more likely if the object is disturbed. Test Log 1616-T6 Dr. Breen Place SCP-1616's cage onto the main testing table and release the lever. D-10293 releases the latch on SCP-1616's cage. SCP-1616 leaves the cage and onto the table. D-Class. Okay, he's kind of cute. Dr. Breen, <laughs> continue observing... 1616 until instructed otherwise. D class. Can I pet the pet him? Dr. Breen. I don't see why not. D-10293 picks up SCP-1616 and begins stroking its head. D-10293 later sets SCP-1616 down and begins observing. No abnormal activity for 12 minutes. D class. Doc, this, this thing is really cute and all, but can I leave now? No abnormal activity for 20 minutes. SCP-1616 is now moving back and forth along the length of the table. SCP-1616 pauses and, and sits on its rear. Its left cheek appears to expand three times its size. D-10293 begins... Screaming loudly. D-10293 
D-10293's eyes, eye begins receding into the optical cavity. D-class, what the fuck? Oh, oh, oh my god, oh my god. D-10293 begins crying and banging on the floor to contain itself. D-class, get it the fuck away from me. Get it the f get. Oh fuck, please, why? D-10293 left eye is gone at this point. SCP-1616's jaw appears to retract and expand. SCP-1616 is observed pulling their respective eye out of its cheek, cleaning it, and nibbling on it for a few mo moments before placing it back in its mouth. An optical optic nerve is also visible attached to the eye leading into SCP-1616's mouth. And that's it. Bruh. Oh yeah, dude, I forget to mention 682 is afraid of the hamster. 682 is afraid of the hamster? Yeah, he's afraid of both the bunny and the hamster because they tried eating him. I see. So in other words, 682 is a brat who's in the war. It's it's Chew. Chew's the lizard. Six eight two is Chew confirmed. <laughs> Wait, does that mean that means Chew Chew has children? So gave Chew illegitimate oh children. <laughs> oh dear God! Oh no! <laughs> You know what? Let's just move on from that line of thought. Yeah. Um. Like besides, like, I guess I I kind of question how this is a keter. Like, didn't it say that it can only grab things that it's seen? Yeah. Like. Literally, just like, like this seems like it would be more of a Euclid. Yeah. Like, like it's dangerous, but it's just like, I don't see, I don't see why it's. Oh, hey, Jerry. Why it's a Keter. Hi. Uh, you're... For a moment, I had no idea why your name was that, and then I remembered last night. <laughs> also, Jerry, we just got finished talking about uh, SCP-1616, a.k.a. Nibbles, the hamster. Oh! Oh! Yeah. <laughs> We're trying to figure out where to put it. Because it's not really a dangerous Keter. Or, it, like, I just saying it could be classified as Euclid, basically. Like... So, I would say... Okay, if we're going to place it, I would say probably certain group or, or like, what is the, like, lowest one? Only um, one. Yeah. Maybe that one. Like, in terms of, only, like, danger only, levels? It only, only affects one person at a time, probably, so. Yeah. Well, I mean, there there was that instant of, like, that really unfortunate elephant getting fucked over, but... <laughs> yeah, the baby elephant getting me eaten. <laughs> like, ultimately speaking, like, I just... I, I don't see how this I thing's a Keter. Like, it's... Yeah. Like, it, it can it can quite literally nibble at the box. That's that's all it can really do. Wait, I just realized, how... How much shit would that hamster do have to go through if it ate an entire baby elephant. Let's not talk about that. <laughs> the poor uh, D-class have to uh, clean it. <laughs> uh, Jerry, we're getting echo from you. Um, uh, I literally just joined? Yeah, we're we were getting echo from you. Okay. Anyway, so so yeah, I, I think in just one works. Yeah. 
That poor D class, though. <laughs> yeah. Wait, I wonder how that felt, like getting your egg dra dragged inside of your own skull. Uh, the eye socket actually has some of the most sensitive nerves uh, in the human body, so it's actually quite possibly one of the most painful things that can be conceived of. Like, uh, thanks to my uh, long history of looking into uh, true crime, I've heard of cases of people having their eyes taken out and then, uh, oh, like... Like literally, just the air rushing onto the onto the exposed sockets. In one instance, a person described it as like someone poured acid onto their face. Damn. Like they those nerves are incredibly sensitive. Or was it the? No, it wasn't. Uh, it wasn't air rushing onto the nerves. It was uh, them having water rush onto the nerves. But but still, like it's it's going to be, it really is probably one of the most painful conceivable things. And the hamster yeah. just took the eyeball out like it was nothing. Yeah, the hamster <laughs> just wanted to have it. Like that's that's the sad part. The hamster just wanted to have a little snack. Like he. Like, you can't blame the hamster. You just want to nibble. Uh, everyone ready for the next SCP? Mm. E. Next SCP. SCP-1621. Also known as a useful plant. Okay. SCP-1621 is an invasive, flowering mimic vine similar to Rhizophora tetracoccus, Raphosia, Viola, and Passiflora. While no specimen of SCP-1621 has ever exhibited sentience or sapience of any sort, all sp specimens mimicked albeit perfectly Luckily, indigenous species, which originally le led to subclassifications of SCP-1621, note, however, that only one genotype of SCP-1621 has been identified. All variants have merely adaptive camouflage. Analysis of chemical biohazards of SCP-1621 follows. The flowers, roots, and vines of SCP-1621 utilize chlorine, trifluoride, in place of sap or nectar. Right. Oh! Chlor chlorine trifluoride vaporizes at 13 degrees Celsius, is colorless, and smells sweet. SCP-1621 must fertilize itself to expand the colony. The sweet scent of the chlorine trifluoride attracts insects and animals, which at 800 ppm is lethal within 15 minutes, and incapacitating far sooner. SCP-1621 sap and nectar are corrosive, toxic, hy hypergolic on contact in most combustible materials without a spark or ignition source react violently when in contact with water, ice, or silicon. silicon containing compounds. Uh, it's capable, incompatible with oil, grease, reducing agents, organic compounds, fuels, and combustibles, and most metals and metal oxides. Cannot catch fire and so cannot be neutralized by ignition and decomposes from into chlorine. Chlorine and hydrogen Chlorine gases if exposed to temperatures higher than 220 degrees Celsius. Disposal can be safely managed by exposing equal parts sap or nectar with kerosene and collecting the resulting vapors for distillation into compact elements. 
The root structures of, of SCP-1621 are approximately doubled in area as those it mimics. If provided with nutrients from carrion, it'll, it'll also extrude vines in all directions at a visible as a pace and continues until the carrion, carrion is dissolved in the nutrient supply exhausted. <laughs> Provided with enough carrion, at SCP-1621 expands at the rate of redacted miles per, per hour. Stationary objects are enveloped slowly during vertical movement, but typically one or more instances of chlorine trifluoride reaction have Reduce stationary objects to rumble, scrap, or ash. Once a vine can do without overlapping with the, with the host stalk, it penetrates the soil and begins to sprout, creating a new stalk, expanding the colony in all but the most and arid climates. SV1621 wipes out all other plant life around the colony by way of corrosion and through fluorine tripe. Fluoride reactions triggered by rainfall. There you go. What's that? That is it. That's the useful plant. Wait, they called it the useful plant? Yeah, that's his nickname. <laughs> Okay. Um. I mean, it's my first inclination is to basically call it the the carp of plants. It just gets into a place and it fucking destroys everything. Yeah. Um. You could technically also call it the snakehead of plants because it sounds like the only way to really kill it is with fire. Did you say snakehead? Yeah, the snakehead fish. No, oh, it's a that's a little less uh, applicable because snakehead, like at the very least, uh, in like western United, western and eastern United States. I'm pretty sure they've been uh, classified as naturalized now. I'm pretty positive. Last I checked, they aren't natural in any way, and they cause horrible damage. No, like they yeah. have become naturalized, as in they were an invasive species that has been acclimatized to the environment. You mean they're not wiping out everything they touch now? I mean... I I'd assume that that's a part of why they're called naturalized. Oh. Hmm. Let me look that up very quick because I did not hear about that. It, it might have been, it might be specific regions of the United States, but I, I know I heard about like certain snakeheads getting naturalized. I tried to look up snakehead fish, and the first thing that Google suggested was invasive. Well, you could look up snakehead fish naturalized. So, yeah, rather than uh, finding snakeheads being talked about as naturalized, there's something saying what a tropical freshwater fish is and what is a snake head fish but there's nothing about it being uh naturalized i mean i got this from like i'm getting i got this information from avian j like it's a youtuber that specifically talks fish oh snake head fish naturalized why aren't I finding it? Is Google just an asshole? Yes. Let's see. Uh, files dot 
dnr.state. Uh, Minnesota Department of Natural Resources Classification Summary of Invasive Species. Why is this going down a rabbit hole about Snakehead? <laughs> you know what? Let's, let's back out of this rabbit hole. What we were talking about with the plants that, that is very destructive. It eats bugs, but it will eat animals. It will eat people. It will eat other plants. What will eat the other plants? It'll melt to the other plants. Yeah, the it, only it, places it, it cannot survive is arid climates and fire. Yeah, I I'd say this is an easy continent. Yeah. I agree. Imagine, if, imagine if this was put in the Amazon. Oh don't God! No, don't no, just no. just. No. Uh. Never. Snake. Okay, so in the yeah, maybe it's just in Minnesota. Okay, and this is not one of the Keters, but not far after Gibble, uh, not Gibbles, Nibbles. Gibbles. There's a an. An SCP that's nicknamed Gilded Urinal. Sounds about right. Okay, uh, so from what I'm seeing, it's some uh some snakeheads in some parts of the United States have become considered naturalized. Okay. Which makes a bit more sense. So they are destructive buggers, but given the right circumstances, they can blend into an ecosystem fairly quickly. Yeah. Kind of, I kind of like the European. Suspicious, because the last time I heard anything about them was years ago. It was a special yeah. about how they're destroying every fish wildlife area everywhere and killing all the fish. Yeah, I like ironically enough, one of the good examples of uh, uh like but... invasive species becoming naturalized in terms of fish that also inhibits one of the most effective manners of dealing with the carp invasion is the fact that uh in most places in I think like mid to eastern United States, European carp have been considered naturalized, which means that now we don't have the option to do what Australia is doing by releasing carp herpes in into the waters, and then that kills off the fish. We don't have that option here because carp her herpes would uh kill both the Asian carp that we want to get rid of as well as the European carp. Right, this is slightly off topic, but every time I see your name, I now think of girl, girl love. <laughs> yeah. You're welcome. It's like one of the most lesbian names you could have given yourself. <laughs> Great. One, you know, I. Uh. Okay. I, I, I also search up snakehead fish naturalized. The first thing I get is uh, the article I was kind of looking through that was looking at specifically Minnesota. The next thing I see is what looks to just be uh, Vir the, the Virginia government's 
uh, talking about northern snakeheads. And then the next one is just uh, a uh, a link with the the title of simply the question: Do snakehead fish travel over land? What? No. No, they actually do. They oh, consider, oh, wow. that's they are inherently invasive because they uh, can uh, get themselves out of land and wriggle across and like be out of like oh how many I want to say they can survive out of water for was it maybe maybe two or three days I could be wrong there but they can survive out of water for a decently long time and they can use that to just get get you know just get their way over to a different body of water they're they're really Next hard to, to deal with because of that oh so hello i'm back hello we definitely at no point mocked you because of boar you do that every single day i don't know what oh, you're yeah. talking about Pikachu, did you ever look in uh, dumb posts where we found out Twitter thought that if there was a family, I think it said, uh, you are Bright's kid? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I saw. And apparently, yeah. apparently my Twitter crush is um, Miss Peep, if any of you are familiar with her. No uh, idea. Oh, and by the way, you're going to want to, like, once want you're done with that stuff, you're going to want to immediately disallow those things from your account. Oh, I already did. Okay, yeah, because uh, we started noticing that uh, they uh, started to make us uh, um, follow some NFT accounts. Yeah. Oh yeah, I forgot to uh, unfollow follow, it. Oh, oh gosh, I needed place. to unfollow that. Well, you no, you had to to do the like the family tree thing and the uh Twitter crush thing. You had to allow this this website access to your account. I still question how many people took Internet Safety One Hundred and One. When they were five. Wait, I didn't you say you did it? I never said my rules apply to me. <laughs> but yeah, if if you will notice uh, in the family tree, it was made clear that Bright's a cheating bitch. Oh There's yeah, just... because in one family uh, tree, Bright was the gr the parents uh, with yeah. uh, my friend Aki, and in the other one. They were parents with penguin. Because apparently no, Twitter not, was very bad at uh, finding no, not, agents. No, not no, not penguin. What it is is uh Bright Bright's oh, yeah, parents. Watch it. You, you. Bright's parents are Penguin and Kieran. And then uh I am Bright's spouse. Yeah. But then over here at Jiri's thing, uh Bright is Jiri's parent as well as the other person, and then Jiri is your spouse. So, oh, oh, yeah, wait, wait, and that also <laughs> because you are you and Aderna are brights and my kids, you are in an incestuous relationship with Jiri, and then one of your two's kids is Wolf the Red. <laughs> How is it that? Um, <laughs> how is it that a snake gives birth to a mouse and a dragon? How does that work? Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, Aki's no, 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 it's a chicken. No, 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 it's it's a bird who gives. Yeah, who Bright gives gave birth. birth to a bird and a we dragon. We don't know which of the ladies gave birth, but oh, Aki a mouse, a mouse is and not a, a snake. Aki is a uh, they're. Let's just say uh, their author name is Raven Karasu, so they'd be a bird, if anything. Why are so many of y'all birds? Why do so many of y'all need I think there's only fly? two birds, my friend and Bright. Nobody mm -hmm. tell them that I'm able to fly. 
That's a I secret. Mean, I mean, I'm canonically a bird. You are? Oh God, I'm going to die. I'm I thought die. you were a hatchet head. Well, I'm a hat... <laughs> what, what about my name being hatchet head excludes me from being a bird? <laughs> that's, that's actually fair. <laughs> So in other you're, you're words, just two, for, with a hatchet in the head. So in other words, uh, two birds got together, and then a mouse and an elf dragon. What's the result? <laughs> and then, and then a mouse and a snake of all things got together, and well, a, a bearded okay. no, heathen no, dad. No, was a mouse. The result. Uh, no, th- three three birds got together because remember, Bright cheated on you. Oh yeah. Did I Ra- ever... Raven I can't remember. Did I ever tell you that my character yeah. does actually have a biological child with a dragon? What? I don't think yep. so. You've told me. I don't my, remember. Uh, my character has a boyfriend who is a dragon and they have a child. <laughs> Zanju, wouldn't be the weirdest fanfic I've read. <laughs> but bookworm is in chat. You had internet safety when you were five. Yeah, don't click on suspicious links. Those pop-up ads telling you you've won something aren't real. Won viruses, viruses, viruses. Meanwhile, when I was a tiny child, that was before there was internet safety tips. That was... Let's just say the internet was a lot less safe for children back then. As opposed to now, where it's... Yes, as opposed to now. It is more safe, believe it or not. Hmm. Let's not go into that. Let's because now there's actual, of, yeah. Now there's actual, out. now there's actual safety infrastructure designed to help kids stay safe on the internet. Yeah, right. back when then, this started, right from that, there were designs to help people communicate without thinking. What if a pedophile goes into this area and starts talking to kids? And then they realized it years later, like, oh shit, pedophiles are going in there and talking to kids. Oh god, why is why is Bright's viewer count going up the second you said that? Oh dear god. Should probably oh. should probably uh should probably say predator though. Oh you're also, right, you're right. Also bookworm. Um Chu's boyfriend is an actual dragon. But he he's he's an anthro dragon. But are you wait, are you saying that a Pokemon dragon isn't an actual dragon? Go sit in the corner right now. Because by that logic, you're not an actual mouse. Well, I'm not the one who made the distinction Bookworm is. Well, I yeah, but you know, and then you dragon. And and then you went along with the distinction. You didn't clear. You didn't correct the the distinction. Anyways, are we ready for the next SCP? No. Oh. I don't. I don't know. What other tangent can we get to? No. Let's let's continue on SCPs. I'm sorry. Yeah. Anyway, next SCP. SCP-1623, also known as Night Marches. SCP-1623 is a destination for anomalous phenomena taking place in the region of Frulli Venzia Italy. It, you can. Hey. Yeah. Hey, right. If you need yes. help with it, send us the like, the pronunciation. That's fine. Well, the spelling. Right. It's referred by the local inhabitants as night marches. 
SCP-1623-1 is a portion of the inhabitants of the Night Marches region that prefers to each other as Banandanti. Instances of SCP-1623-1 differ from the rest of the inhabitants by old worn clothing, many times including linen and tie-dye aspects with their appearance generally described as neglected. At approximately 2100 hours uh, on the four days with the highest measure of temperatures of every year, this is SCP-1623-1, lose consciousness and participate in a Diana effect. SCP-1623-2 is a portion of the inhabitants of the Night Marches region. That SCP-1623 instances referred to as the Witchman Maladanti. Instances of SCP-1623-2 differ from the other inhabitants in SCP-1623-1 instances by dirty, dark clothing, often including jewelry made from wood, copper, and silver. Many SCP-1623-2 instances have been spotted as beggars or street thieves. SCP-1623-3 is a designation for a series of fields and plains and the Undyne and Cordenon provinces at which Diana events take place. The choice of the field used for each event has proven to be random with no discernible pattern discovered so far. A Diana event is a designation for a, for a skirmish that takes place during the nights of the four days of the year, with the highest measure of temperatures between projected instances of SCP-1623-1 and SCP-1623-2. These projections bear similarities to the instances themselves, although their exterior appearances vary and have frequent and impractical and practical modifications. Mm -hmm. These include changes in clothing, color pa patterns, or lights on the clothing and skin, suits representing various animals or becoming animals themselves, makeshift weapons used unusable for real combat, stalks of fennel and sugar hum and flags showing the stalks. The projections are intelligible to, to the touch and appear to be able to interact only with each other. The skirmishes you usually proceed in a disorganized manner. SCP-1623-1 projections fight the SCP-1623-2 projections until they are about to expire. But instead, the projections in question disappear and their respective instances wake up from their unconscious state shortly after. These skirmishes always continue until one side has no surviving projections. The highest recorded number of projections on either side reach redacted on redacted. However, more than redacted projections on either of the dash 2 or dash 1 instances have never remained on site after the skirmish. During this time, all meaning remaining projections undergo a redacted before disappearing from SCP-1623-3. In the following weeks, the region of Night Marches experiences an improvement in agricultural production and higher birth rate, or an agricultural drop and an increase of miscarriages and stillbirths. Because of the personnel modifications and as per revised containment procedures, the projections have proven very hard to identify with their respective Dash 1 and Dash 2 instances. Aerial rec reconnaissance is under consideration as a method to identify possible Dash 1 hmm. and Dash 2 instances participating in a Diana event. Alright, there you go.
I don't really know what to think of that. Yeah, I honestly, I like, like, is there like, is there any actual danger here? Uh, except for the fact that dash one and dash two instances actually try and kill each other. I think the only danger that's posed are to the people who live there. They're not going anywhere. Yeah, and in and in which case it's just a certain group's classification. Yeah. So this is seem to be very outward going. I mean, I could see it getting dangerous for the people who live there, but nobody else. No offense yeah, to and, them, but that won't destroy the whole world. Yeah, and more so, like this is again one of those things where like I question why it's a keter. Because, like, if this is just a thing that only happens to this town and it never leaves this town, like... Uh, I can see why they would do that, because there are some things that don't leave a town that, that are totally insane. Well, yeah, but again, key, key classification is based upon how hard it is to contain. Oh, that's true. <laughs> like... Well, this. so, Hatch, I would say, like, in this case, it could they could have classified it as Keter due to, um, like, due to its potential, due to them not knowing if it would like, in the future, leave the town. Yeah, but generally speaking, when they do that, it's because like there's a precedent for it happening. Yeah. Like, there's something that would lead them to speculate that that is possible. Like, ultimately, if we just go into every every SCP and assume the absolute worst possible thing conceivable will happen, then every single SCP would be a keter. Yeah. I will admit that's true, after all. The difference between the one I was thinking about and this one is... There's probably some uh, danger of the crooked man eventually getting out of that town. And when people are struck by it, it doesn't just lower births, it kills people. Yeah, like in that, like specifically for that case, that instant, like the crooked man itself is the anomaly. But in this case, it's pretty much the entire town is the anomaly. So basically, all you have to do is contain the town, which uh, of all the things the SCP Foundation can do, that's actually, like, fucking trivial. That's a fair point. So yeah, I would say just certain groups. And uh, as seems to happen a lot, I question why this is a keyer. <laughs> I mean, Chu does not want to respond to my question. What was the question? <laughs> uh, oh, yeah, he's a dragon. So, like, feasibly, like, you're small and... Oh, my God. My question <laughs> was, does your boyfriend like war, Chu? Oh! Anyway, time for the next SCP. SCP-1625, also known as Tradition. You have to say it like that. Because <laughs> I, I do. Anyway. Also known as Tradition. <laughs> All right. SCP-1625 is an oral tradition within the Amaski tribe of Kenya. Said tradition consists of a mythic story explaining the history of the tribe's ethnarch known as Redacted and the creation of the Amaski people. The anomalous features of SCP-1625 are only apparent when an in individual attempts to recount it. All individuals who attempt to pass on 
SCP-1625 will provide a different ending for the story. There have been no documented repeat endings, those which appear more than once from different individuals. SCP-1625 follows a consistent structure for all three tellings, beginning with Redacted being held in... Uh-oh. What? 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 Alright, uh... Twitch, do not get mad at me. Beginning with Redacted being held in slavery in the North, followed by his escape, his founding of the Amoski tribe, and the liberation of the Amoski people from slavery. The standard story oh. ends after this point, with each speaker providing their own ending. The secondary trait of SCP-1625 is the genetic transfer. SCP-1625 is inherently known by any individual who is at least 10% descended from an Amaski member, even if they have received no previous knowledge of SCP-1625. Attempts at using amnestics have met with failure as affected subjects will remember the legend after several days. For this reason, all genetic, genetic masky members are to be secured at Site 37. Uh, SCP 1625 1 is a corpse identified as that of an African male and understood to be that of Redacted. Patriarch of the Amaski tribe. A new instance of SV 1625 1 will appear after any attempt to pass on the protected legend. The body will continually appear at Site 1625, though the specific location varies. The condition of the body, as well as any objects surrounding it or inscriptions in the area, Varies and will change time. SCP-6025 is passed on. The location will often change with SCP-1625-1, with the body being located in several cases: in either a large mausoleum, a common grave, or buried several feet on the ground in a nondescript location. Following the events of Incident 1625-1, personnel are to treat SCB-1625-1 instances with extreme caution until the specimen can be safely secured. It is unknown as of writing how SCB-1625-1 is continually transferred to Site-1625. The research at Site-37 is ongoing. Uh, incident 1625-1 On November 5th, 1993 During routine tests involving SCP-1625, an ethnic Amaski member created what is now document 1625-8-A-3, a transcript of SCP-1625. The ending is said document stated that there was a plague which afflicted the Amaski tribe and eventually killed over redacted people before being stopped via quarantine. Following standard procedure, the research team at Site-1625 searched for and located SCP-1625-1 in a previously undisclosed tomb. The tomb was sealed off and placed underground. It was seemingly carved out of the surrounding rock. Inscriptions along the walls describe the disease with symptoms similar to those of the bubonic plague. Though several qualities are similar to redacted. The inscriptions also gave multiple warnings addressing the body of redacted. SC-1625-1 itself was found several dozen feet from the ground with redacted other corpses and returned to the service for testing. Seven other corpses were also moved from ground for additional testing. After four days, the head researcher 
at site 1625. Dr. Betros requested additional medical supplies due to staff illness. Supplies were sent from nearby Site 91, escorted by MTF, MTF Beta 9, aka Dead Reckoning. Upon revival, arrival, Beta 9 discovered the members of the research staff were infected with disease can detailed in the document 1625-A-3. And Site 1625 was deemed a quarantine area. Members of 6 NTF Beta 9 carried out a procedure 13 Romeo. And new staff members were brought in, in to replace the previous researchers. On November 15, 1993, the current procedures were approved for Site 1625 and, and for the Masky tribe. The tribe, along with 12 Descendants was moved to Site 37 on April 17th, 1994. And there you go. I feel like if this wasn't happening in the SCP universe, I would have to say this is how humanity ends. So, just to try to recap things from my brain. What's going on here is we've got a indigenous tribe who have an oral tradition in which every time someone from their tribe or genealogy says this tradition or says this story, they end up saying it a different way and then that ends up the the different retellings end up altering the state of this original tribe member which could then feasibly cause harm as a result of say the story ending with a plague and then there's a plague that's a result of it yeah i have no idea how to classify it yeah. Well, it was probably originally a story that ended with a plague because there was probably a horrible plague at one point, but they had to figure out a way to get rid of it. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so like, are you saying that the, the anomalous aspects of this are basically the tribe trying to stop the plague I think the plague is less uh one moment let me turn my alarm off there we go I think the plague uh is less uh, the anomaly and more like a possible result from the anomaly. The anomaly is even when they're not told the story, they remember, they know it. Well, yeah, no, what, what I, what I was meaning is that like, are we presuming that like this anomaly of them telling the story like this exists to keep the plague from coming back? I think it exists to keep their culture alive, considering how many people would have likely died in that plague. Yeah. I guess I'm just getting confused. Either way, I have no fucking idea where we would put this. Damn. Well, so long as it's so long as it's well contained, I then mean, I would have to say it's not a danger, but it, it only takes one person to say the wrong version of the story to possibly bring another bubonic plague upon Earth, so. Yeah. 
Uh, if that happens, it goes from uh, non-dangerous to super dangerous, super quick. Mm. Yeah, and like, now like what Zanju's saying in the uh, chat, this kind of, I just realized, this kind of feels like another one that we already looked at. That I think we put into CK. Because like. Like a genetic quirk. Where anyone with this specific gene. There was a chance of. When they dreamed something. That dream would come to pass. And if one of those people. Had a dream of. Well universe is ending. There would be a chance of. The universe literally ending. Yeah. Oh yeah I remember so, so does this fall into that category? Is my question. Because if that's the case, it could very feasibly reasonably be made XK or ZK. I think you're right. It would be made that class. Yeah. Which I remember, I remember that one specifically because, like, I think the true horror in, uh, I think the true horror in that case comes primarily from the fact that, uh, if that sort of genetic quirk existed, that would actually be the first example of a justified genocide. Yeah. Because literally it's for the good of all of humanity to get that gene out of the gene pool. Which that doesn't it hatchet doesn't mean it's what Yeah, what Twitch this is about. This is fictional. Um, we're talking about fictional people and fictional abilities and fictional things that don't happen. I mean, I would hope that Twitch doesn't think that a plague could exist. By telling a story a certain way, but well, they also think that uh, um, salted dried bread is a slur. So what? Oh, oh, yeah, that's <laughs> old news. It's sad. That's what counts as news. Yeah, <laughs> Zanji, the true horror was the friends we made along the way. Oh my god. I guess I, I would probably put this in XK rather than ZK, because I would imagine that there is um less of a uh, uh less of a like reality thing, more of like a earth yeah. chattering thing. Yeah. Like it seems significantly less likely for a version of this story to come out where someone is like, and then at the end, the reality collapsed in on its Like, that seems less likely with the case of an oral tradition as it does with, like, someone literally having a dream that causes that to happen. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, this reminds me of the orcs from Warhammer 4K universe. Their tech works literally because they believe it works. They paint their bullets red because red makes bullets go faster and as a result, their bullets go faster. They what is paint this stuff? What is flames this on their ships for the same reason and it actually makes them go faster. Huh. What is this? The fucking slingshot from it? With the silver bullets? Where they only work when you believe they work. Mm hmm. Mm -hmm. We've got Stephen King in here. Yeah, I think I think I'm gonna do one more SCP, and then I'll be it. I ain't no, feeling not, get, getting tired. Turn. Yeah, slightly tired. Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. So let's see what the nickname of the final SCP for tonight is. I swear, if it's something funny like Nibbles, 
Oh, dear. I hope it's something. We need another Nibbles. We just uh, talked about a thing that, like, could like could potentially justify mm -hmm. Genesis. I mean, we need... We need something happy like nibbles. I I, oh, I oh, see the I see the thing that's uh before the one we're about to read, but the one we're reading is La Vie and Rose. Yeah, but anyway, the SCP that's before it is the Human Food Pyramid. Oh, that's oh, that doesn't sound good. <laughs> that sounds. Actually, no. I'm not going to say what that sounds like. Well, before we do, Chew. before we do it, I want to look and see what the human food pyramid is. No. Chew Fuck. would prefer Fuck. if it was the Fuck. chew food pyramid. Book funk chew for. That one doesn't even make sense. Bonk. Chew gets double bonked. I will still say I love the fact that like with uh bonk hatchet and bright it's bonk bright bonk hatchet but there's just the added to chew so it's bonk the chew. <laughs> it's just a bunch of people who will stack together on a pyramid for food. <laughs> nice based. But like basically, what does that even mean? They'll do whatever know. they can to get food. Anomalous humanoid beings, and one of the things they'll do is stack in a pyramid. Okay, let's just read the one that we're actually supposed to be reading. Oh, oh, oh this one's been updated recently. So it has the. Disruption class and risk class. Mm. All right. SCP-1631. Disruption class, dark. Risk class, notice. SCP-1631 is a phenomenon that causes crystalline flower-like growths to appear on certain grave markers in the country of Denmark. SCP-1631-1 Instances have a composition identical to their substrate being composed of granite, marble, or other materials commonly used in tombstones, despite their abnormal coloration. In all observed cases, SCP-1631-1 instances have been shown to only affect grave markers of children, primarily those ranging from infancy to approximately 15 years old. Discovery. SCP-1631 was first discovered in 1989 after a family relative reported the cherub marker of their nephew, Runar Helgeson, as, as having been vandalized, after several odd structures attached to it. Due to the context of the apparent crime, it received nationwide attention, necessitating the usage of Foundation content. Contingencies 3B6, aka scapegoating, when the structures were examined more closely and their anomalous nature was confirmed. Since the discovery of the subsequent classification, SCP-1631 appears to be declining over time, theorized to be in response to a long-term downward trend of infant mortality. The instigating force we behind the anomalous phenomenon remains unknown. Wait, so this is just... Oh, wait. Wait. What? Wait, at first I thought it was, but, but hold on. Description upgrade. SCP-1631-2 is a humanoid entity resembling a young woman, believed to be responsible for a generation of SCP-1631-1 instances. The mechanism at which it generates instances, as well as its specific motives regarding the instances, remain unknown. All NTFPI-3 members 
are to remain alert to any woman matching SCP-1631-2 subscription located within a one mile radius of any SCP-1631 event. It's just marble flowers that just destroy child gravestones. Just destroy them or just show up on them? Well, it said it was vandalized, so I don't think it looks nice or I think what what it's doing is it's poking out of the gravestone. Yeah. Cause like the picture it's showing, it looks like it's coming out of it. Yeah. Like, hold on, I can... Oh, I, I got this. Uh, let me just go to Discord. Let me go to stream planning so everyone in here and I understand. No, I did not want to send it twice. What the f... <laughs> there you go. It's very pretty. Until you remember it's destroying child graves. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really fucked. It's like, I will put these flowers on these graves. But it, it is unknown as to why it's doing this. Well, I mean, it's... I guess that's the thing. I, I, I guess I'm not seeing how this would be called destroying the graves. Oh, wait. It's just... It's just little... It's pretty little colorful crystal flowers that show up. And just, like, cover the graves. Yeah. Basically, uh, yeah, but uh, like if it if it completely covers the graves, then no, that's. Oh, I see how that would be destroying the graves. Think about it. If crystals start crystallizing on the stone, it will technically start destroying the grave marker itself. Mm, yeah, like if if it's just like these little bulbs, I don't see how it's just like all that destructive. But if it like. Can, like if it's a really persistent growth of the crystals then I could see how it's damaging I think it's a growth that comes from inside the stone because if you notice it looks like those tiny little bumps are just the starts of the crystals that would eventually destroy the grave marker if it wasn't uh, removed if you can even remove it yeah, well, yeah, but we also don't know that those would necessarily butt out like that. They might just not do that. Mm. Like, basically, if the... Why did I think Hatchet and Jerry said... Gr Chew! Anyway, um... We don't really have to classify this as a Keter. Oh, th did it get changed from a Keter? Addendum 13-10-2020. At the time of its original discovery and classification, SCP-1631 had an estimated occurrence rate of approximately every three or four weeks. SCP-1631 events appeared to be growing less frequent over time, with the inactivity period in between events lengthening to approximately 1.5 to 2 months. If the current rate of decline persists, SCB-1631 will functionally cease. It should be reclassified as neutralized by late December of next year. Further containment procedures have been deemed unnecessary. Okay, so it's neutralized. Yeah, I was gonna say, like, even if it wasn't there, like, even if it wasn't neutralized, like, this would, this would have to go into one of the non-harmful tiers. Okay, I'm just going to send another picture of another addendum that was way further, that was further up. And apparently it was like a, a talk about one of the parents and whatnot. Who witnessed mm -hmm. this? Uh. Well. Let's see. What's inside doing? Oh!
Yeah. Why is this particularly notable? Eh, I mean, I didn't expect it them to actually s s directly say how the children died. Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> Bookworm adds, also in the conversation stuff, SCP-1631-2 says, everyone deserves flowers, don't you think? So I think they're pretty harmless, at least in intention. Okay. Well, yeah, harmless in intention, just not practice. Well, yeah, but, like, what that also implies is that they wouldn't destroy the grave. On if purpose. that entity... Well, if that entity has control over the buds, then they wouldn't have them grow to the extent of actually destroying the grave. Well, the, well here's the thing. Uh, with this, uh, it actually could be rain could be wrong at the same time we don't we're, we really don't know if the flowers keep growing it does not say uh, it just says I, it appears that's it i would hedge my bets on it doesn't grow considering or that they doesn't continue growing considering the fact that the entity that is causing them to grow doesn't actually want to cause any harm Why they're literally just Huh? Why is this a Keter? Uh, it, it's ironic because this time when you start questioning why it's a Keter, I can completely understand why it's a Keter. If it's like happening, like randomly, like it, like when this started, it was just happening consistently all over Norway. There's no way to contain that. Wait, I thought it, it says Denmark. Denmark. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I mixed up my Nordic <laughs> countries. <laughs> yeah, it, like it was happening all over Denmark. There's no way aren't to... You supposed to be, aren't you supposed to be the pagan? <laughs> I'm pagan! I'm also... I mean, the like... I mean, the... Per, the yeah. Well, like the practicing pagan. The like, uh, religious pagan. Norse. Norse I, I'm pagan. just saying there's like multiple pagans in this server... It's just there's different types of pagans. You don't need to be uh, of the Norse faith of any type to be a spit well, to be like pagan. I, I, I think it's reclassified. Was, like, specifically. So we already yeah, know it, it's uh, reassigned or because it's going to be reassigned anyways. Yeah. I, uh, um, I think Adorno was just, uh, speaking toward uh because i'm a norse heathen and yeah. ultimately speaking my practice does not much hinge on a geographical understanding of where these gods were originally worshipped uh i forgot what the next scp i was just making a joke so. yeah yeah i know i i forgot what the next scp's picture was so i want to see what its number was so i can save it you know, so I can automatically start reading tomorrow night. Yeah. And. Oh. <laughs> Is this a joke, SCP? Uh, no. It's not a slash J? No. Oh my god. <laughs> what the what what's he doing there? Let's see. Its nickname is Log of Extra Scholastic Events. <laughs> doesn't make it that doesn't help at all. Wait. I have a feeling it's actually pretty dangerous. Wait. Wait. This This SCP has gone through four reclassifications holy shit what extra normal reclassified to keter reclassified to neutralize reclassified to keter bruh it's gone through four reclassifications what the 
fuck is it? I guess that's a good hook to get people to show up tomorrow, god damn it. Yeah. <laughs> you want to find out what's up with this man wearing all black with a traffic cone on his head leaning up against a wall that has gone through four different reclassifications? Uh, t- tune in next time to find out what the fuck is going on here. Yeah. <laughs> now I'm interested to read this. Oh, but we'll wait till next time. You must bait viewers for tomorrow. <laughs> I don't think she's very good at baiting. But that thing is. <laughs> wow. Yeah. All right, so, uh, Jerry, last words, go. Cone. Uh, Chew, last words, go. Bookworm be getting ready. Bookworm, bright, and, um, as soon as, if any of you guys want to stick around, as soon as I finish up this game and... My PC updates, I am going to torture myself by playing a spooky scary game. Nice. Oh, like, on on stream? Yes. Mm. Oh, wait, wasn't it, a Far- or Far Cry, what the fuck? Uh, Resident Evil? I don't play Far Cry, I understand it's... I take offense to that. I love Far Cry. That's hey, just to make people shit. mad. Hey, Chu, would like to know some information about Far Cry? You can use a rocket launcher as a sniper rifle. Shut the fuck up. No, you they cannot. Are, I'm pretty sure there are already sniper rifles in, a, in their own special way. No, they're <laughs> not. No, they are. Oh, my God. You. That, that's not how a rif- sniper rifle works. Hey, that's catch cool. it. I did snipe them, if you remember correctly. Yes, you sniped them. The <laughs> verb, sniped them. That does not mean you used a sniper rifle. A sniper rifle is a specific <laughs> implement. Being able to you. <laughs> I broke hatchet. <laughs> Hyperventilating over your stupidity. So, I think I know how to break hatchet whenever I feel like breaking them. Shut the fuck. Shut your butt. Wait, I, could, I just realized I can be taken out of context. <sighs> yes. Don't worry, everyone already knows how much. Yeah. Already knows what? We got yeah, cut off. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, uh,. As I was trying to say, uh, aren't you doing Resident Evil? Um, that is the plan, if it works, and I'm not too much of a piss baby. Okay, then in that case, I'll probably not join, because I don't want spoilers. There's right, you. right, we can see your, tw- your, we can see your Twitter. Oh, yeah, Discord. I forgot that. Well, yeah, they can't see on stream. I forgot to cut off there. Subscribe to Bright and follow her Don't Twitch ask. and make sure notifications are on so you can Cheryl make sure Bright. to tune in to the next SCP tier listing. Professional streamer. Ah. Uh, thank you, Bookworm. Book- oh, yeah, Hatchet. Bookworm said subscribe to Bright and follow her Twitch and make sure I- notifications are on so you can make sure to tune in to the next SCP tier li- listing. Bright, I'm in chat. I can I can see that. No, you can't. Right. Wait, she's about to bite. Quick. Wait, she's about to bite what? She's about to bite. <laughs> She's about to bite what? Just, she was about to bite. You mean who? <laughs> what do you mean who? Yeah. Wait, wait, That's he not fair. Someone? Is he fighting his boyfriend? She says, Ooh. no, Chew's just going to start chewing, going to start bite, because Chew has the mouse-like urge to bite. And Chew <laughs> in stream chat says, must bite before stream ends, and the way to, uh, 
the the way to stop Chew from biting is to offer head pats. Kinky? <laughs> Maybe. When is Chew not when is Chew not kinky? Oh my gosh. <laughs> and then bookworms over here. Oof, I was thinking about letting you bite at least once. <laughs> What's That's wrong with y'all? The, the Plus, Chu, Chu doesn't bite people for that reason. Especially not his Really? Are you sure? Dragon. Because I've had people bite me for that reason. Bonk. Do you bite the penis? No. Right, that's evil. I mean... <laughs> Unless some, I'm not going to finish that. No. You know what? It's bright. Of course you'd say that. <laughs> oh. Here, one sec. I got you, Chew. One sec. Yeah, also, Darius, do your last words, then Hatchet, then me. Uh, to answer your oh. question, Jerry, no. Um,. Who does not bite his Dirk BF? It's the other way around. <laughs> because she was a masochist. Does it count as biting if you're just consumed? No. You think it both can't happen? Oh, that's true. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, everyone's going to hate this. No. Ah. There you As go, the danger Jerry. passed. Yes. Okay. I'm gonna Sorry, do it. it just seemed so well I'm played. Do it. I have to. <laughs> I'm gonna do it. What are you gonna do, Chew? I'm gonna do it. Do what? Just for that, I'm gonna do it. Don't. I'm gonna do it. Do what? What? I did it. I do. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. You piece of shit. <laughs> what happened? Chu used mod power to mute Bright. <laughs> <laughs> and then I muted and deafened Chu. <laughs> uh, Bright. You son of a bitch. <laughs> it's a war. It's a war of moderation powers. <laughs> oh. Okay, so did Adurna do their last words? Yeah, Adorno, do your last words. Um. Call or subscribe. Play play the tra new trans character on Apex Legends if you wanna. Um. And. Um. I. I. Yeah. I guess I gotta say. It. Um, Golem is trans. Nice. That's it. Last words go. And remember, kids. My brain just died. <laughs> is that it? No. <laughs> Damn it. Remember, kids, sometimes educators die too. It's okay. It's part of life. <laughs> Okay, uh, go, oh, go ahead. Hash it, last words, go. And remember, kids, the guy, on the, cor the, the guy on the corner of the street is a charlatan. What? Okay. Alright, time for my last words. Hatch is gonna hate it. And no, it's not the R R. Don't worry okay, about that. I, I literally had my hand on my deafen button. <laughs> I'm ready. Um, I'm ready. All right. It is. All right. If you want the best sniper rifle around. Oh, for fuck's sake. Go to hell. <laughs> you just you just need to get the unicorn rainbow rocket launcher. It's perfect for sniping needs. It wasn't a unicorn. Remotely it... sniper. It wasn't a unicorn rainbow rocket launcher you had. It was the fl it was a unicorn rainbow flamethrower. You didn't have a unicorn rainbow rocket launcher because that doesn't exist in the game. All right, hold on. 
Hold on, I know how to fix that. Uh, alright, gotcha. If you want to help your friends with bees when they're in a wooden house, <laughs> set fire to the house. <laughs> Bright, Bright lit a barn I was in on fire because I said there was bees in there. <laughs> I did. Bright set, Bright set the house on fire around me. <laughs> of course she did. I think I actually did it a, a second time too. You did it at least three times in one session. Yeah, you just I did. kept. You just kept like you. You got really happy because you found a flamethrower, and you kept lighting everything on fire. Oh yeah! Like every time we ended, we I would always set every building on fire. <laughs> City. There's nothing wrong with setting things on fire. Yes, there is. It's true. <laughs> All you have to do is get an arsonist permission slip, and you can set as many things on fire as you want. That doesn't exist. Yeah. That you know of. That's how it works. No, it's not that I know of. That doesn't exist. Only if you don't have an imagination. <laughs> nice last words. Actually, wait. Let me correct my statement. That doesn't exist with any level of credibility. Credible according to him. The U.S. government. Why should I care what the U.S. government thinks? I have permission from the United Nations. No, you don't. What? No, you don't. <laughs> anyway. You think they're going to give permission to you specifically to set fires? They're too busy setting fires elsewhere. They clearly would never give you permission to do that. <laughs> unless you join, not unless you join the army and get in a position where you're allowed to use them. True. In, in that case, yes. Do they still Bright would, not be, Bright would not be allowed to be in the army because of her disability. Probably. And the fact that she's trans. Because thanks, Trump. I'm oh, sure I think they got Biden repealed. That did... Oh, did Biden sure repeal that? Biden I don't know. Okay, I don't remember things well, okay? Remember oh my gosh. They're... Everyone is spamming I am a toaster. <laughs> Wonderful. Anyway, uh, D class, I hope you enjoyed. Hope to see you guys next time for your next experiment.